everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today's video is on Veterans Memorial Hall. In 1899, the well-known local soldier, Thomas G. Loyler, who was the commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, Garrett L. Nevius Post No. 1, submitted a petition to the Winnebago County Board. The petition signed by 200 men was a request for a building specifically for veterans. This building named the Veterans Memorial Hall, was finished in 1903. It was the first ever of its kind, built in Illinois and, according to some sources, the entire United States. Its purpose was to serve as a constant reminder to all the sacrifices given by the brave men and women from Winnebago County and a way for generations to remember and learn about their lives. It has gone through many challenges over the last hundred years, but its purpose has always remained the same to serve Winnebago County's veterans and their families. The dedication of the building was so special that President Roosevelt himself came to dedicate the building for veterans of all the wars past and present. This is definitely a building where the walls actually do talk. The walls bear the names of 5,000 veterans from Winnebago County who served in the Civil War and the Spanish-American War. The first floor walls are bordered by the names of Civil War battles. It also contains many actual artifacts from the men and women from Winnebago County who have served in the wars. Many of these priceless items were donated either by the service people themselves or by their families. Each item tells the story of the person to whom it belonged. Many theorize that this explains the high amount of paranormal activity that has been experienced here. Several dramatic events have taken place inside the stone walls of the hall. Thomas G. Loyler, the man who fought so hard for the building, was laid in state there before his funeral. Several thousand people came through in the four hours that his body was on display. Most people left with tears in their eyes at the loss of this amazing man. Another memorial was held there for another remarkable Rockford hero. Mary J. Brainerd was a Civil War nurse who followed her husband when he left to serve his country. She wrote poetry that told of the devastation she witnessed during those years. Other stories echo in the building that are harder to decipher, but just as deeply imprinted upon the hall. Many people have seen a woman walking on different floors. This author has even seen her, though I did not realize she was an apparition at the time. I was waiting outside the door that opens onto Main Street for the manager to unlock the door. As I was starting to wonder if I should knock again, I saw a woman dressed in a long gown descending the stairs. I thought maybe she was there assisting the manager, so I knocked on the glass. The woman never turned to look at me as she walked down the stairs to the first floor and down the corner to continue down to the basement. I was really annoyed by this time, and when the manager let me in a few minutes later, I shared the story and told him that the young lady was very rude to completely ignore my knockings. The manager had a strange expression on his face as he told me that he was alone in the building. Paul Smith, one of the psychics who have assisted with haunted Rockford events, thinks he knows the woman's identity. Other psychics have validated Paul's impression of the woman's story over the years. The woman was coming to receive the travel information for her young son who was returning home from the army for Christmas. When she came to the hall for the information, she received one of the dreaded telegrams that begins with the words that everyone with a loved one in the armed services fears. We regret to inform you that your son has been killed. The impression of her agony in that moment still continues in this historic building. It seems to linger especially around one of the benches. People who have sat on the bench have described their feelings of overwhelmed sadness. Paul was able to fit the pieces together at another event, this time at the Cedar Bluff Cemetery, when he solved the mystery of the woman's identity. We were also joined by another psychic, Sarah Boker, for that event. I researched all of the stories and never tell Paul or Sarah before the tours which people we will be speaking about. Usually they walk a distance away and discuss their impressions with Paul's wife, Lisa, who writes down everything for them. While they are doing this, I am telling the story of the person to the group. I had not even begun my story when Sarah immediately started to share her impressions with the group. Sarah explained that she had a young man who was communicating with her. He shared his experience of being on the battlefield in France. 
The man told Sarah that the field was covered in mustard gas and that originally he was wearing a gas mask. This man turned to see where his best friend was and was horrified to see his friend had been wounded and was on the ground. The man removed his own mask and rushed to place it on his friend. He then picked his friend up and carried him to safety. Unfortunately, he could not save his friend, and he himself became ill from the gas. The young man was distressed that he left something behind, and he was desperate to tell Sarah and Paul his story. While Sarah was sharing her impressions, I could see that Paul was also communicating with the young man. Paul stated that the young man kept saying, You know me, you know me, and my mom. Suddenly, Paul said, His mother is the woman at the Veterans Memorial Hall, who went to receive her son's travel information and instead found out that he had died. Paul was so overwhelmed by the feelings that the son and mother had both shared with him that he needed to take a break from the tour. The young man's name was Grant Damon, and his mother was Della. Grant's death occurred just as he had described it to Sarah. He had been injured by the mustard gas while in France, and he suffered for a month before succumbing to the effects of the gas. Grant had been dead a month before word reached home to his family. Some people may not believe in psychics or that spirits can communicate with us, but I can tell you that everyone on the tour believed it that evening. Other paranormal claims in the Veterans Memorial Hall are of children who kept in the balcony area during meetings and a band that plays on as though still celebrating happier times. There is also a couple who sit on the far side of the balcony. Paul and Sarah shared that this couple was attending a funeral there and were not pleased that there were children running around at such a stately event. Some of the experiences that people have shared at the hall may be what is known as residual hauntings. These are the type of hauntings that take place almost like a loop of video. It plays over and over, and there is no connection that can be made between the observer and the participants. One example would be the woman who I saw while at the door. She walked down the stairs and never even looked at my way even though I was pounding on the door to attract her attention. Other experiences could definitely be classified as intelligent hauntings. These incidents occur while conducting investigations. The person is attempting to connect with the spirit by asking questions and using a digital recorder or a flashlight to signal a response. This location seems to have its share of both types of hauntings. There have been several investigations conducted in the building and EVPs have been recorded during these that indicate that something paranormal is happening. Other incidents have included people seeing shadows and hearing music and footsteps going up and down the stairs. This unique building is considered by many to be sacred ground. It is a place where the men and women of our country and the sacrifices they made for this, their country are still remembered and where their legacy is passed on to new generations. The current manager, Scott Lewandowski, has worked very hard to offer events to ensure that these men and women will not be forgotten. The hall has recently been granted permission to have a statue that features a Civil War soldier moved to the Wyman Street entrance. The soldier once stood on the old courthouse lawn and most recently stood at the intersection of Main and Auburn Streets on the grounds of Greenwood Cemetery. It seems a fitting memorial to all who have served and those who currently serve in our armed forces. Thank you for watching today's video. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. What paranormal or crime-related mystery would you like to see next? I hope you all have a great day.